Our people here have known about sickle cell disease for hundreds of years. And unfortunately, those with the disease can die at a young age. In West Africa, the World Health Organization has estimated that we lose anywhere between 5% and 16% of children under five years of age from sickle cell disease alone. That's hundreds of thousands of children that we lose every year. When I was young, we were twins, and my twin sister died at the age of six. My parents went to the hospital and they told her that I am a sickle cell patient, and that was the reason why my younger sister died. Sickle cell disease is a blood disease. Red blood cells are normally soft and squeezable. That enables them to be pushed through small blood vessels, capillaries, where they give up the oxygen that they're carrying. In sickle cell disease, the cells do start out as nice, round, and soft when they're carrying oxygen. When they begin to give up the oxygen, the hemoglobin, the sickle cell hemoglobin, forces the cell to change its shape most of them looking like the letter C or the farm tool sickle, and that's where the name came from. Now this misshapen cell has become stiff and is no longer able to squeeze through these tiny blood vessels, so they tend to clog up the blood circulation. It's, it's, it's unbearable. It's like electric shock, the pain. So when you're going through the pain, it's like you are having electric shots, continuous electric shock your hand, your joints, any part of your joints. You can't help yourself in the home. So anytime you have crisis, you just have to go to the hospital. They will check maybe if I have an infection. We need to educate our public. We need to educate parents to be well informed. So information, education and communication plays a major role uh, sickle cell disease is inherited. If you're not born with it, there's no way you can get the disease itself. So you don't have to be afraid to play with, uh, to befriend somebody who has sickle cell disease and be uh, good to them. It is very important for parents to understand that for a child to have sickle cell disease, that child has received copies of the gene from both parents. Culturally, you know, people have various uh, beliefs as far as sickle cell disease is concerned. Some think it's witchcraft, some think it's, it's a curse. Everywhere that you go, they will tell you, no, you, you are sickle cell patient, you can't do this, you can't do that. So my dreams got shattered. They think that if you have sickle cell disease, you cannot do anything. I think that they are wrong because what they can do, we can also do but we have to look after ourselves well and take our medicines. The stigma that is attached to sickle cell disease is completely unnecessary. In this day and age, we have to be sympathetic, supportive, and be able to encourage those who have the disease so they can get proper care and live long and useful lives. Sickle cell disease is not a curse. It is not a death sentence and it's a very manageable disease. If I hear people say sickle cell disease is a curse, it's a death sentence, I get really sad. I have um, enough evidence to prove that children who are placed on treatment, they have lived better life as compared to children who never knew they have sickle cell disease. Newborn screening is important. Comprehensive treatment for sickle cell disease children is very Im important. It's of public health importance because looking at the prevalence, at least at any moment in time, we have about 2% of our population having um, sickle cell disease. So if we are able to screen people early or children early and find out what they have, we are able to help them with clinical interventions to improve their quality of life and not make them suffer as much as they do. So before we start a newborn screening in Ghana, 
we knew that Ghana, like all the other sub-Saharan African countries, that we expected that about 50% to 80%, 90% of these children don't survive by five years of age. And we were quite gratified to say that in the first 10 years of, of the project, we had lost only 4.5% of, of the children. He's called George Shraba Mensa. And he's two years, 11 months, yes. Okay, when I gave birth to him, they ran some tests on him and they find out he too was having the sickle cell disease. We do give our pregnant women education about what would happen to their baby with newborn screening. We'll take a small amount of blood and we ask them to return within four weeks after the test to get their results. Unfortunately, because these newborns actually look healthy, even if they have sickle cell disease, many mothers don't see the need of it. They think, well, if my baby gets sick, I'll bring the baby. Uh, you realize if a baby is born, the fetal hemoglobin is so much. So because of the fetal hemoglobin, they likely may not sickle until after six months of age. And so if we have enrolled these babies into the clinic before their sixth month, possibly by two months of age, it likely will help them to survive, you know, the complications of the disease. So it's important that if you have your baby tested that you return for results. Those who don't come back from the results and we know they have sickle cell disease, we track them down. We try to find them in their homes so we can bring them to clinic. And again, impress upon them that this is not a condition where you wait until the child is sick before you do something. They need to take their medications, particularly the penicillin, twice a day, every day for at least the first five years of life. So basically what we realize is if you have a number of children who are on treatment compared to those who are not, survival is an issue for those who are not on treatment. We have tested more babies uh, for sickle cell disease than any other country. But at the moment, we are only testing about 4% of the children born in Ghana. So we have a long way to go. And for us to be able to measure up to the sustainable development goal targets for infant mortality reduction of child death ETC, we need to be able to screen more and more of our, of our newborns. And this applies to the rest of sub-Saharan Africa. Sickle cell disease is killing hundreds of thousands of young children every year. And all these countries need to make resources available so that we can save these children and help them grow to become healthy, useful adults in their communities. Sickle cell disease is not anything so serious that you can't handle, you can treat it. Just that you have to manage it, you have to take care of yourself. And if you accept it and then you live with it, you will be okay. You'll be okay.